Hey guys, in this Spark AR Studio tutorial, I want to show you how you can create a fake random selector. So it's like a random selector, but it always lands on the same option at the end. So let's go. Hey again, so let's create this fake random selector here in the Spark AR Studio. Before we start creating the filter, please make sure you have all the assets ready you want to use in this filter. For example, the start card, which says a question like, where should I go next? And then, of course, all the options that should shuffle through and the one option that should be the last one where the filter always lands on. If you don't have your own assets ready yet, I have created some for you. You can download them with a download link in the description. So just go to the download link and then you will end up here on this side and here just click on download. Yeah, in the, in the folder you will find the start.png file and then also all the options. So after you have um, yeah, all your assets ready, we can start creating the filter. The first thing we will do is of course to import all our assets we need for this filter. So we go to the left hand side to our assets bundle and then we click here on import. Then for the first thing I just select the start.png file and then I click on open. When this is imported, please make always sure that you select the texture on the left hand side, go to the right hand side and then set the compression to none because otherwise the quality of the image will not that good. Then we will also import all our options as a texture sequence. For this we also go to the left hand side to the assets panel, click on the plus and then we select animation sequence. After this is created I will rename this to options. Then select the options animation sequence, go to the right hand side and here at texture click choose file. Then go to the options folder and then just select all the options you want to have in your filter and then click on open. So after the texture sequence is imported again make sure that you select it, go to the right hand side and set also the compression to none. So now we have one last thing we want to import and this is the last um, option that the filter will always land on. So for this again we go to the assets panel, click on the plus, then we go to assets and import. And here just select the option where which the filter should always land on. So yeah, just select one and then click on open. And again, make sure the compression is set to none. So after this is done, we can start creating our scene for this filter. For this, we go to the left hand side to our scene panel and the first thing we will do is to create a face tracker because of course we want to um, have the filter on our head which is following our head movement. So select the face tracker and hit insert. Then we need three planes for the start, for the um, animation sequence and also for the option that should um, show up um, when the filter is finished. So again click on the plus here at the scene and search for plane. Now the plane is fo already following my face, it could be that the plane is not following your face, um, then it will be outside of the face tracker to make sure that it follows your face. Um, yeah, just drag and drop the plane into the face tracker. Then I will rename this plane so I don't get confused and this will be the start plane. Then just um, right click and click duplicate and this will be the options. And then again right click, duplicate and this will be the end. <laughs> no, not duplicate it again, just rename it, this will be end. So now um, all our planes are covering our face, we don't want this. So now a little trick, um, I will create another object, I will create a null object and then I will drag and drop all my three planes into this null object. Now the null object is again outside of the face tracker. Please make sure it is inside of the face tracker. And now we can just um, yeah, adjust the position and the scale of the null object and all of those three objects will follow. So select the null object, 
go to the right hand side and here set the y position for example to 0 0.12 oh no this is 0 0.12 so now it is above my head maybe to 0 0.14 and i will scale it up a little bit to 1.4 i think this is a good a good size so the next step is that we create the materials for our objects so we go again to the assets panel and then click on the plus and select the material the first material will be the start material so just rename it so you don't get confused then select the material go to the right hand side and here set the shader type to flat then go down to texture and for the texture choose the start texture then we will just duplicate this material. I will um, rename this material to options, go to the right hand side and set the texture here to the options. And then duplicate this again. And this will be the end material. Then go again to the right hand side and set the texture to the one picture that will show up in the end. So this will be this picture. And now we have to make sure that the materials are used for our objects. So we go to our scene panel, click on this on the start plane, go to the right hand side and set the material here to the start material. Then do the same for the options, go to the right hand side, materials and set it to options. So also for the end, select it, go to the right hand side and select the end material. So now everything is set up to program this filter. The programming is really simple because we don't have to program the logic of the random selector because we have the same output every time. So we can just play our animation sequence, then set the visibility of the animation sequence to zero and activate the visibility of our end card. And this is the logic behind the filter. But yeah, I will guide you through step by step. So, so I want to start the filter with a screen tip, but I al always rec recommend it that you start it with the recording start. So the filter starts automatically, but you can't test the recording here in the Spark AR Studio. So I will do it now with a tab. So this is the first patch I will add. So open your patch editor, go to add patch and then search for screen tab. So then we have this screen tab patch then we also need a switch patch so go again to add patch and search for a switch the screen tab will set our filter on so we can connect the gas to state output with the turn on input of the switch when this happens we want the start card to disappear and the option card to appear <laughs> let's do this for this we go to our null object and here we go to the start plane then go to the right hand side and next to the visibility you can find a little arrow just click on it and you will find a yellow patch here in the patch editor now we will do this for all our three planes so also for options extract the visibility to the patch editor and also the end card so also extract the visibility to the patch editor so the start will be on at the beginning but when we tap on the screen it will be off so we need here also a nut patch so search for the nut patch the on off output of the switch patch will get connected to the nut and this will um, be connected to the start now the options will appear so this when this is on the options also be will be on and then at the end after a certain amount of time the end card should show up so for this we will use an animation sequence as a delay so just create this you can just um, get to the output of the switch and then drag and drop it and then you can here create a patch or you also go to add patch so now we have this here it is, we can set the duration how long the filter will flip through. I will set it to three seconds. And when this is done, um, our end should be visible. So again, here 
is a completed output of the animation sequence. So we again need a switch patch and we connect the completed output with the turn on of the switch. And here um, also connect the on off output of the switch with the visibility input of the end patch. So now we can already see that where should I go next in Europe is visible. Now when we tap on the screen, the filter starts running through and after three seconds it will stop here um, on our end cut. And this will always be the same. Every time we start the filter it will be the same. But now we have to make a few things sure that the filter works correctly when we test it on the device. The first thing is that we have to go to our materials, select all three of them and then go to the advanced render options and here um, disable the use depth test and also write to depth. Then we also have to make sure that our planes are here in the co correct order. So start at the top then options and then end because when now the end is not here on this position it is in the middle and when I start start it now again the filter will not stop because the random selector is overlapping the end card so make sure this is here but we can also make sure that the options are turned off so we need another switch patch. So for this um, here, just click on add patch and add another switch. So the output of this, of the first switch goes to the turn on input of the, of the new switch. Then Sparge AI will automatically create this pulse patch in between. Then the completed output of the animation will turn this switch off. And now you should have no problem with the orders but yeah also make sure that the on and off output of this switch is connected to the visible input of the yellow options patch so now it is no problem where our um, how the order is so you can have no problem with the order it's just one more step to make this sure that it works correctly so again tap on the screen and then it will land every time on the same output. So this was all the magic about how to create a fake random selector here in the Spark AR Studio which lands every time on the same output. So I hope this tutorial was helpful for you. If yes, give it a thumbs up and if you're new to this channel, it would be nice when you subscribe to it. So thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye!